Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we got the Monday market report for the week ending October 13, 2024. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silver Hound. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the most relevant and notable modern uh, graded coins that I've sold here in the last seven days. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at some realized prices straight from greatcollections.com, uh, where they are one of the uh, the top online auction sites for such coins. And this is going to give us uh, uh, quite the gauge of the overall general market. Um, you know, we could make the, uh, the, the, um, the assessment that if the modern market's doing well, then the whole market's doing pretty well on its own. Um, and we are certainly at a time of the year uh, where the market is uh, generally very robust. Uh, the holiday season best represents a time where folks are getting back into the hobby after a long summer layover and, uh, you know, things are looking very bright so far. Um, so before we jump into some of these selections, uh, of course, we do have a little bit of a notification here on whatnot. Our calendar, calendar of events is filling up for the rest of the year. I'm excited to bring uh, a lot of great holiday um, coin auctions, lots of currency, silver, of course, will be in there, and also some gold, too. We're all ramping up for that big holiday giveaway, which will be the first week of December, so... It's all going to take place here on Whatnot. It used to be on YouTube, uh, but we have transitioned our holiday event to be on this platform. So um, join up if you haven't done so already. My referral link is down below in the description box. You could save yourself $15 right off the rip when you sign up under me. So that's on any first item that you buy on the platform. Um, and in addition, Whatnot is looking for spirited sellers like yourself. If you're looking to possibly supplement your current income whatever that looks like uh with a great live auction site whatnot is one of the greatest around so far and they have a pretty good promotion you sign up today and i have my referral link down below so you could use that as well they will match up to your first 150 dollars in sales through your first seven days this is a limited one-time offering um, i would suspect that it's not going to last too much longer um, this is something that they said that will be limited. So what does that look like? I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't wait. Go ahead and sign up today. And, um, you know, if you're motivated to, um, you know, sell on this platform or any platform similar to it, then, uh, you know, the uh, promotion is wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some of these selections. So we have a great, uh, great list of registry set coins. But this week we have quite a few very nice uh, collector and vestible grade pieces as well. So here's a 1952D Lincoln Wheat Scent to kick things off here. This is a really nice grade. However, it's worth noting that this is not the finest grade that you could uh, realize from a 52D. Denver minted coins of the 50s are generally very well struck. So there are uh, a number of, exa of examples that have hit 68 um, consider this one to be um, that safety net coin in the event that you do not reach a 68. If you did grade one of these, a 67 plus is a good consolation prize. This one right here is also CAC certified as well. It's got that green bean sticker right on the label there. And this one sold for $1,631.25. Uh, we have a much more tougher uh, 1951 Philadelphia here. Um, generally, the P minted, the Philadelphia minted 50s coins, going all the way up to about 1956. These are all quite tough to realize the top grade. And registry set owners are having a heck of a time trying to find one of these at that highest state of preservation. Um, so we have this one that popped up on the market here this week in a 67 red. This is one of the more tougher ones out of the 50s. Um, and this one, a uh, very, very nice sale at $2,306.25. And uh, last week we highlighted a Mint State 68 Plus CAC stickered steel set. This week we have just a Mint State 68. Um, it does it does pale into comparison compared to that other coin we talked about from last week. 
but I just want to let you guys know that this particular one year type series is so unbelievably popular um, that people are looking for the lower grades uh, because the higher echelon grades are just way too expensive to own. So this one right here in the 68 doesn't even have a CAC green bean on it. It's just a regular graded coin. Um, ended up selling for $2,033.99. A very pretty coin. And uh, one that'll, uh, that'll fit as an investor coin or possibly a type coin as well for that high-end collection. Now we're getting into some uh, much more tougher uh, dates. 1937, this is a Philadelphia minted example here in a mid-state 67 plus full red. This one is also has the CAC green bean sticker. Um, Philadelphia coins of the 30s are, are pretty nice in quality. Where you get uh, into something that's a little bit tougher, the uh, the Denver minted pieces are um, the, the scarcest at the highest grades. San Francisco minted coins of the 30s also pretty well struck. This one right here, a really beautiful coin, uh, probably made and tailored for a registry set. And I wanted to take the moment because someone had said, well, you know, if every coin is going to be like registry set, you know, coins, then, you know, what's the use of even doing these videos? Well, or renaming it into the registry set market report. Well, you know, it's such, and this is a testament to the uh, popularity of this particular segment of the game. It's just wildly popular right now. And, um, you know, there, there are naysayers. Uh, this has its detractors, and that's fine and well and good. I'm not going to friggin' change, you know, because a vast majority of the coins fits better in a registry set than it does in a collection or a, in an investment portfolio. I just won't do that. We have to talk about the entire market. If registry sets are dominating the scene right now, then that's going to dominate the MMRs. I'm sorry that you guys have to hear this from me, but um, there's been a few people that have been entirely way too negative on this um, particular subject when, you know, it's just the sign of the times, you know, and it could best represent an area of opportunity for those folks that might have coins like this. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, bring that to your guys' attention. Um, there's been a lot of comments in recent videos on the Monday Mark reports talking about such things like that. So getting back to this one here, this is not the finest grade of a 37P that you will find. However, it is a good secondary tier coin. This one ended up selling for $1,080. And coming up next, this is something that we don't traditionally talk about, but now we have one here to discuss. A 1936 Satin Proof Lincoln Wheat Set. Um, compared to, say, the previous coin, the 37, and if we look at the 36, there's just simply no comparison. The strike is unbelievable on these earlier proofs, and it shows. Um, everything is just cut and chiseled to the finest quality that you can expect for proof coins of that time. Now, this one right here, graded by PCGS, is a Proof 65 Red. It is one of the more rarer um, earlier proofs uh, before you get into the ones from the teens in 1909. Those are kind of like what I consider to be the top of the pyramid or top of the scale for early Lincoln Cent proofs. Um, so we have this one here, a nice, very satiny example of this that ended up selling for $5,400. Okay, it's a very expensive coin across many grade levels. 65 is hardly the finest grade of this particular date and of this proof. 1935S, this is actually a very nice looking coin right here that ended up in a 67 red holder by PCGS. Um, it's a good looking example, uh, but far and away, it's not the finest graded piece that I have seen. Um, I have covered Lincoln Sense, you know, over the course of the last 10 years on the secondary auction scene. And, you know, this one right here is, again, one of those fantastic secondary tier coins. This one sold for $4,782.38. And 
And we also have a 35 Philly as well. This one is unbelievable. The quality is unmatched, of course. It comes along with a very, very large grade in a 68 red, uh, which is fantastic. But again, Philadelphia and San Francisco coins of this decade were very good quality. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot more that would qualify for grades like 66, 67, and 8s. This particular one here ended up hammering for $5,456.25. And uh, we're going to end off the Lincoln Cents on two very tough dates. Now, the 29D is tough because it's a Denver. I've actually owned a number of examples in a 29 Philly and San Francisco that are much more easier to find in Mint State Red. However, a 29D is unbeliev unbelievably scarce. Uh, one that takes a lot of dedication. Uh, you know, you, you'll go to about... 20 different coin shows and not find this particular date in Mint State Red and Raw, you know, which some would say those are still out there. You'd have a little bit better luck trying to find a 29S than you do a 29D. So this one here, PCGS gave a Mint State 66 plus full red example coin here, and it sold for $7,481.25. Um, just that dollar figure alone you know can can make us realize that this one is truly a scarcity and uh finally uh this is uh, a beauty right here it looks nothing like the first couple coins that we talked about but we were talking about one of the lowest minted lincoln wheat cents bar none in today's game and that's a 26s um i've owned a number of really nice high grade pieces of this date but they just don't compare when we're looking at a 65 red brown that you see here um, this is a true time capsule piece um, looks every bit as good as it did 80 90 years ago uh, when this thing you know was held on to um, and you know by the way spoiler alert people did not hold on to any type of physical money back in the early 30s maybe late 20s you know because we were talking about a great depression period you know people were spending um all sorts of coin and they were getting beat up so to find one again that's truly that what we could say is a time capsule piece is um uh, is next to impossible all right so when you do come across one of these and you feel like that's going to be a nice high enough grade to uh, uh consider it you know quite a gem in your collection i would hold on to it there's very few of these that we'll be able to find in the future that's raw and as natural as this one is. Um, so you guys are interested in finding out how much this one sold for. It was not a small price tag. $6,689.25 for this one here. Now we're on to nickels. We have a few to cover this week. We have this 1940, okay? And this one is a proof this is what they call the reverse of 38. It's got the uh, the uh, the much more uh, uh, wavy steps on Monticello on the reverse. And, um, you know, it's a little bit more crude as far as what it looks like. However, it's still a very pretty coin. Uh, it is a tougher date, but tougher in a sense that 68 is such a high... Um, high kind of like mark to reach anyways um you know oftentimes you'll find these in fives and sixes and people will be okay with that you know particular coin that they have bought for 85 to 125 bucks uh, but one that grades out this high is quite special this one ended at six thousand four hundred ninety six dollars and 88 cents uh, we also have a couple buffaloes how about a 37 right here um, i chose this one over the AU55 three legs buffalo that sold for around 1500 bucks. It was a nice coin, but this particular one right here, ladies and gents, is just one of the premier um, graded examples of a common date. Um, and this represents a better opportunity for a lot of folks out there that, you know, attend the shows. You do know that there are lots of uh, raw ungraded 36 and 37 dated buffalo nickels out there for around 20 30 bucks that if you pick the right one 
you might just hit that lightning in a bottle and that's this one here in a 68 this one sold for a whopping four thousand seven hundred forty two dollars and 49 cents and guess what it's not even the finest grade um i believe 68 plus or 69 is on a 37 um, which, you know, those, those coins easily eclipse $10,000 any other day of the week. Uh, we also have a 35, uh, much tougher than it looks. Um, anything that is earlier than a 36, we have to assume that you're going to put more work into finding those pieces. This one here in a 68, much like the previous coin, but this one has a much higher ceiling because of its grade state and the mintage is quite a bit lower as well. And because of that, this one sold for $12,937.50. I just love the little hints of color on this one. 1920D, we have to end the nickel portion of this video off with quite a scarce one here. Uh, 1920D, I mean, what else can we say? I, I've i barely found any of these higher than XF. Um, and even XF examples will set you back about $100.00 which is uh, a true testament to the staying power of such tougher dates of the series. So this one here, happy to see that NG, NGC graded this one in a 65. It is a true beauty. This one sold for $3,375. Uh, we have a couple dimes. 54S is not a scarce date. These are out there um, and available in raw condition and you can even find some that are quite toned nicely this one right here toned you know which plays into the uh the overall final sale price you know gives it all the originality it needs okay this, this is again very beautiful piece that's never been dipped never been doctored this one such a huge grade two and a 68 full bands uh, it's got a very nice uh strike on the reverse and this one sold for two thousand nine hundred thirty nine dollars and 62 cents roosevelt dimes yeah i think they're uh they're coming coming back with a passion here this week uh because we also have a 52 proof in deep cameo now this my friends is a true chaser in the roosevelt dime series um proof 67 deep cameo uh it's got all the frost in the world it's such a pretty coin um, and you know, this was one of the big, big coins of the week at $8,606 and 25 cents. Um, these were my two favorite Roosevelt dimes. There were, you know, about five or six we could have added to the list. There were a few examples that sold in the thousand to $1,500 range, but you know, uh, might as well just put my best foot forward and show you these two this week. Uh, we also have a 3070 Mercury Dime. Uh, can't go a week without at least talking about one Mercury Dime because it's such a popular series. Mid-State 68, full bands, really stunning coin, very well struck. $1,743.75 for this example. And a 29D, uh, quite a tough date. Again, we're, uh, if we're playing the parallels of any other denomination of this era, we have to understand that not a lot of these were saved up in this condition. However, how did a 29D squeak out a 67 plus full band grades with CAC on there? Someone, someone held on to this and put it somewhere and left it alone for nearly 100 years. All right. And that, that's a lot of restraint on something that everybody else spent pretty heavily. $3,150 for this particular piece. And uh, again, it's it's a true beauty. Uh, we're going to end things off here on a few quarters and a half dollar. A very surprising add-on to the list here this week. Um, this one is here just for the novelty of that kind of pastel, very light, inoffensive toning. A 1960D is not a date that we typically associate as being a bomb, but this one was. It graded a 67 by PCGS. It's a very respectable number. CAC green bean as well. And this one sold for $2,405.25. A 42. Uh, we've covered a number of 42 fillies. This is yet again another really pretty, very original and wholesome business strike coin. It is 67 plus. Very clean. There's not a whole lot here distracting this one. CAC green bean as well. There's a lot of CAC representation this week. 
uh, $3,475.12. And a 38, another Philadelphia time capsule. This one has that tint of color all throughout. I mean, this is a, a beauty. One of my favorites, I would say, bar none this week. Uh, this one in the 67 plus with the toning. And I'm happy to report that this one sold for $4,272.75. And the final coin, and this is where we have to lend a little bit more respect to the 40% silver composition. It is that very composition that allowed for a lot of very robust toning on a lot of examples all throughout this very short series. Um, this one is no exception. Uh, this time, CAC G graded this one in a 67 plus. This thing is absolutely amazing. Um, the coloring is, uh, you know, it's something that you would see in outer space. It's that cool. Uh, it's it's great, nebulous. You've heard me say that before. It's got just a wonderful spectrum of all the different colors that you can imagine that make up quite the palette. Um, that lends to just a visual masterpiece of all things. Um, so this one right here, a huge sale at $5,461.88. And I would say 95% of that is supported by the toning of this coin. So if you guys have 40 percenters that have been like holed up in some special arrangement or storage, um, you know, method, you know, I, I would... I would say that, you know, you might have something on your hands because these things are just pursued, they're hot, they're highly sought after, but mostly for the artistic nature of them. All right, well, that's going to go ahead and do it for the Monday Market Report. Again, the information provided is for educational use only. None of this is financial advice. Please collect and or grade your coins responsibly. And that's going to go ahead and wrap things up. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silver Out. Thank you again for such another great week of Monday market activity. The modern market is doing very well, you know, and uh, I would suspect that we are going to continue to see that here in the foreseeable future. I want you guys to have a great rest of your day. Thank you again for tuning in and enjoy this hobby. I'll see you next time.